From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Who? Johnny Dollar, the insurance investigator. This is Miss Abbott, isn't it? Yes. What are you doing in the stable office? Waiting for you to call me. Your father threw me off the farm a few minutes ago. A man named Cully, who works for your dad, said he really didn't mean it. Said he'd fix it up for me to talk to you. Cully? I guess that's why he asked me to phone the stable office. You told me the horse wasn't injured, shouldn't have been destroyed. I hope you didn't believe all that, Mr. Dollar. Well, now, look, I've got to settle a $65,000 claim on the death of a racehorse. The carcass was cremated, and I have no evidence that the horse was destroyed or even injured. I don't know what to believe yet, but I can tell you this. Don't ever talk to an insurance investigator the way you did earlier today, not unless you can back it up. My, you sound grim. You sound like it's a laughing matter. Hardly anything's a laughing matter. I'll be right down. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, San Pietro, California. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Universal Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Duke Red matter. Fifteen minutes after I spoke with Terry Abbott on the phone, I looked out the window of the stable office and saw her starting down toward the stables. She'd changed clothes. This time, she was wearing blue jeans and riding boots. She carried a quirt in one hand, a cigarette in the other. There was a scarf or some such tied around her hair. All in all, it was a classic impression. Rich girl, racing horses, and fast cars. She wore a disdainful pout, also classic. Hi. I do. Father asked me where I was going, and I told him I was going for a ride. Why'd he throw you out? He didn't like questions I asked him, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I won't like the questions you asked me. Possibly. Probably. <laughs> you don't really work very hard trying to please anyone, do you? Industrial hazard in my business. Hope it doesn't bother you too much, Miss Abbott. Nope, I like it. You're so darn sure of yourself, and you know so darn little, and you look like you might be thinking all kinds of things. How tall are you? No, 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 let me guess. Six one? Not quite. Well, you're tall enough, I suppose. Do you like this office? I suppose you've been opening the files and going through all of Father's papers. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? Nope. Well, unless you know something about horses, the papers around here wouldn't mean much to you. Times, weights, whole schedule and chart for every bit of stock on the place. Do you know anything about horses? Just one. Duke Red. Oh. He was insured for $65,000. And he's dead now. You know, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. I wanted to talk to you before I left. What about? I didn't insure Duke Red. My father insured him. Your business is with my dad, not me, Mr. Dollar. Pardon me if I seem a little confused, but earlier today you were very anxious to tell me something about all that. Was I? Yes, you were. Hey, what is this anyway? I wish we hadn't met. But we did, and you mentioned there was no need to destroy Duke Red after he'd been injured. Now, did you say something like that to me because you were angry at your father? Or did you say it because there was some truth to it? Well, now, what's that supposed to mean? Do you just stand around and pout when people ask you questions? Did you mean that horse wasn't injured or that he was injured, but that he could have been saved? Well, did you have any reason at all for saying the things you did? I... I've been very upset lately. All of us around here have been very upset. Yeah, I'm getting that way myself. Duke Red was the best horse we've had around these stables in five years. His father was a real champion, Earl Red, and maybe you've heard of him. He earned $190,000. We've all been counting on Duke Red since he was a colt. He had it then. This was going to be his big year. When this stupid accident happened, it, it just turned all of us upside down. Uh-huh. Is that your explanation for the things you said to me? Yes, for the moment. Now, please, don't ask me any more questions right now. One more. What? Your father fired a couple of people I wanted to talk with. One of them was a Howard Monroe. 
Dad's office manager. Yes, I met him a couple of nights ago. He wouldn't talk. He was too mad. Said something about letting your father handle his own dirty business. What? Now, I don't know what that meant, and I don't think I care just now. But the other man who was fired was a horse trainer named Warner, Tom Warner. According to your father, it was Warner's neglect that caused the horse to stumble and back into the tractor blades. What? Warner isn't around here now, but he must be somewhere, and I want to talk to him. Now, where can I find out his address? He's from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore. What about his address? Well, it'd be in the personnel files. You can get those at the office in town in San Pietro. Okay. Do you think he went there? I don't know. I don't know. And what's more, I don't care. The Abbots, father and daughter, were turning out to be a real peachy pair to deal with. I left them in their racing farm and drove back into San Pietro in the offices where I obtained the Baltimore address on Thomas Warner. Expense account item four, one dollar and five cents, one telegram. To Hartford in the office of Niles Pearson, requesting a complete record of Benjamin Abbott's financial status. Item five, one dollar and sixty cents, another telegram. To Thomas Warner, horse trainer, requesting him to contact me as soon as possible at the San Pietro Hotel. Meanwhile, I did what I could to establish Abbott's local credit standing. I started with a bank. Dollar? That's right. What's it about? I'm an insurance investigator. I'm working for Universal Adjustment Bureau. We have a claim in on a property of Benjamin Abbott. Duke Red? That's right, $65,000. Wow. Yeah. That's quite a load. What can the bank do for you? Tell me about Abbott's credit situation, for one thing. Oh. He does bank here, I presume. Yeah, for years. My name's Dale Ryan. We better go in my office. Sure. I'll grab a chair, Dollar. Thanks. Miss White? Yes, Mr. O'Ryan. Bring in Mr. Abbott's file, please. Up to date. Yes, sir. It'll take a few minutes, Dollar. All right. Maybe you can give me a rundown on how things are generally. Maybe. This is all confidential, I suppose. Absolutely, Mr. O'Ryan. I have no axe to grind. You must have something to grind or you wouldn't be here. People usually try to cheat insurance companies for money reasons, don't they? Well, usually, yes. Have you been cheated? I don't know. I don't know if there's any reason for us to be cheated. Look, maybe it'll put your mind at ease if I just tell you that a man with a $65 claim has his financial situation checked as a matter of course. You're a careful bunch of cut-ups, aren't you? Well, business being the way it is, yeah. Well, I don't think you'll find too much to raise an eyebrow about with old Ben. He's got one of the largest balances in town. Roughly, it'd be in the $100,000 area. Yeah, racing horses is quite a business, and he knows what he's doing. I doubt very much if he'd try to bamboozle you people out of a tiny little 65000 Well, that's small change to Ben Abbott. That ranch, the stock, his investment there must come to well over a million dollars. He meets a weekly payroll in the $10,000 class. Terry must run him a couple of thousand a month or so. You mean his daughter? Yeah. You met her? Yeah. Well, eh, when Terry wants a new car, she just parks the old one she's been driving and takes a plane to San Francisco and buys a new one. She might even feel like having a vacation and fly over to Honolulu. She's very expensive that way. <laughs> if what you say is true, she must be. No doubt about it. Well, she'll probably be marrying somebody one of these days as soon as she can find a guy who can stand the freight charges. I figure it'll be one of that Los Angeles oil gang or somebody from Texas. Oil's her best bet, don't you think? Well, that is, if she wants to stay in her social circle. It isn't very wide, naturally. Naturally. Oh, yes? Uh, Mr. O'Ryan. Oh, come in, come in. Mr. Abbott's folder. Oh, thanks. Well, here it is. See for yourself. Yeah. There's a lot to it. You want to take that office over there and look this over, Mr. Dollar? Mr. Dollar? Yeah, I think I'd better. I spent the rest of the afternoon going over Benjamin Abbott's local bank standing. It confirmed in detail what Mr. Orion had sent in general. His assets were many, his cash on hand plentiful. Also, and this has a bearing, the activities of his daughter Terry were indicated in some of the expenditures. There was only one item I had to question Orion about when I'd finished looking it all over. Yes, Dollar? I, uh, I noticed a check was drawn five days ago payable to Howard T. Monroe, $5,500. Yes? It's marked bonus. Monroe handled business affairs for Abbott a year or two, and Monroe left a few days ago. Probably severance and things like that. Yeah, Anything wrong? I don't know. For all I can gather, they didn't part company under the best of terms. As a matter of fact, they had kind of a row. 
It seems strange he'd pay Monroe a balance after he kicked him out. He's a strange guy. Check cleared all right. No question on it. Oh, yeah, I noticed. Something else, then. Hmm? Monroe was fired last Tuesday. Monday, a man named Thomas Warner was fired, too. Tom Warner? The trainer? Yeah. Abbott told me Warner was responsible for the accident with Duke Red. Huh. Funny. What? Well, according to these books, Abbott should still owe Thomas Warner a month's salary, $700. Well, let me see. Mm. Oh, yes. No bonus, no salary, no severance. Seems to me Tom Warner's got a kick coming. Why doesn't he kick, Mr. Orion? I don't know. I would. Most anybody would. I rechecked Abbott's local office in San Pietro and learned that Warner had not left any kind of forwarding address. As a matter of fact, he told no one he was leaving. Expense account item six, dollar ninety-eight, dinner, alone, in the dining room adjacent to the lobby of the San Pietro Hotel. I wasn't enjoying my chef's special with a limp green salad when the clerk came in. Mr. Dollar. Hmm? I uh, thought you might be in here. Long this is call for you, Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, yeah, fine. Where can I take you? Use the lobby phone, Mr. Dollar. I'll plug you in from the switchboard. Yeah, uh, go ahead. They're on the line now. Good, thanks. Thanks very much. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello. Is this Johnny Dollar, the man who sent the telegram? Yes. Who's this? Uh, this is Thomas Warner's father. Uh, the wire I opened it, it said it was important for Thomas to get in touch with you. I thought I'd better call and tell you where you could reach him, Mr. Dollar. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. I come home from work. I think this is best. Uh, you call him in San Pietro. He worked near there for a man named Benjamin Abbott. Uh, ben Abbott, training horses. You... You get in touch with Thomas oh, and Mr. Oh, wait a Abbott. minute. I'm in San Pietro now, Mr. Warner. Your son left here four days ago. Didn't he come home? No. Are you sure Thomas is not at Mr. Benjamin Abbott's farm? Positive. Do you have any other ideas where he could be? No. Not sound like Thomas, though, Mr. Dollar. He would not go off away with, without letting his mother and me know. Are you sure? I am sure, certain. Thomas, my son, he always let my wife and I know where he is so we don't worry. Something is wrong, Mr. Dollar? What? Is something wrong? Yeah. Maybe there is. Yeah. Plenty. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... Well, sometimes a dead man can answer a lot of questions. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.